He said we are in love. Daddy's been bad. <laughs> <laughs> Naughty daddy. <laughs> We're here to play out our own father cheating wounds on the internet through Andrew Huberman. I, for the record, don't have father cheating wounds. <laughs> <laughs> and I cannot say one way or the other. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Uh, we're speaking for Banksy, of course, who we can't get into it <laughs> due to <laughs> all the lawsuits. Like Banksy's our father? No, Banksy's father cheating. Banksy was an IVF baby. He was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, born out of wedlock. Um, and Bernie was an immaculate conception type, a real Christ figure, a messianic being, that one. I was laughing so hard when I rewatched our five-year-old Marianne Williamson video we were like Marianne is not against or she favors a woman's right to choose especially in cases of rape incest or immaculate conception I was like that's so good that is so good that was a Jared joke yeah. that is should be a lawful reason an allowance for abortion yes if you just immaculate can immaculately conceive you should be able to it's so non-consensual at every level when God impregnates you <laughs> You're supposed to just be grateful for it and be like, I'm so divine. And apparently, according to the gist I got from scanning over a Dan McClellan TikTok, I think abortion is allowed mm. in the Torah. So Mary actually would have been allowed because the fetus wasn't treated as a full human. A, a person wasn't a person until they take their first breath. The spirit, the word for spirit and the word for breath are the same. Which I think that's really reasonable. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Hello. Well, you've got a, a thousand years of Jewish law to back you up, allegedly. Again, I'm just totally going off vibes here, which is going to be kind of the the tone of this this podcast uh, and yeah. all podcasts under our jurisdiction. <laughs> I am not even particularly familiar with this Andrew Huberman situation, but I've obviously been hearing things about how he had seven girlfriends when he was doing IVF with one girlfriend. So I am <laughs> very excited for us all to dive in together. I'm going to come clean. I have no idea who Andrew Huberman is. Oh, bye. Who's Andrew Huberman? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Brain Daddy Hubes has so cold. encouraged us all to, you know, get some daylight into our eyes because apparently we're so disconnected from our own organism, our own reality as sentient wild creatures running amok on the home of our planet Earth from which we have grown and evolved through millions and millions of years we're so disconnected from that that we need to be told we need to have like be scientifically convinced through data and evidence For and three like hours. <laughs> a, a frankly dominant male alpha figure type to like tell us sternly through science that we need to go look at the sun and get sun in our eyeballs. Yeah, I need that. <laughs> he also talks about how he rarely wears sunscreen, which I'm Ooh, like, that's not. Andrew. And then I recently got destroyed in Andrew Huberman's comments because he made an Instagram post saying that he was doing an episode on peptides. <laughs> and I made a stupid little joke for the skincare <sighs> girl who's saying, um, a man who doesn't wear sunscreen is going to teach us about peptides. Because just like every girl since oh. COVID-19 has been learning like about every fucking peptide that exists <laughs> on the planet through skincare content on tiktok um anyway it was just a little joke i didn't really think much of it and then i just got fucking destroyed and then everyone in there was like i bet you want a soy latte from starbucks right now and i was like <laughs> why are we here why are we doing this it doesn't have to be like this that is um, so funny wait so what was the uh, the rule on peptides yes no Oh, I well, I, I did actually pod think the episode wasn't really, I did that. Was that a good? That's good, yeah. Okay. But the episode re wasn't really on skincare peptides, but uh -huh. it was more like ingesting them for performance. Performance enhancing enhancing peptides, huh? Got to be enhancing your performance. What kind of peptide should I take? Just I, I don't know. You would have to watch the episode. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Okay. Well, it wasn't one for the girls in the end. Well, Andrew Huberman, not a fan. Doesn't wear sunscreen. I wear sunscreen. Yeah. So Every I'm like, day. yeah, you know, good about the sun, but also I don't think you should be telling, like skin cancer is one of the most prevalent forms of cancer in the US. Yeah. Sunscreen is objectively good for preventing skin aging, but apparently all the, apparently all the bros think it's toxic. Well, for crimes against skin cancer, I label you skin canceled, Andrew, if you're watching, and I'm just kidding. Huberman does a lot of sketchy hand-waving, hiding behind vague and misleading science claims to keep his grift. I think he's more Dr. Oz than money would like to believe. If Alex Crandall's saying it, 
I'm Alex, to wait, take it Alex my said base that. Reality, yeah. Okay, I am adjusting my base yeah. reality as quick as possible. I'm if like, Alex when the smartest kind of person I know like, says yeah. something, then I better, I better. Like that's the that's our Andrew Huberman is Alex Crandall. Yeah. yeah. Um, I grew up in Palo Alto, where Stanford is, and I can tell you that the spiritual tech bro scene there is extremely poly with lots of consent issues. Yeah, I wish you would have just done consensual polyamory. Oh, uh, okay. I'm like, I struggle to watch movies. I've said it before. It's we just a do. long time for someone with an attention span so roasted by the digital age and like mine. And often no real payoff Yeah, in my mind. no real payoff where I'm like, give me something new. Give me something like Make something Make me think about this for the next or, six days, but yes, then also exactly. don't. It's like, that's the thing. It's like, if I'm going to watch a movie, that's the experience I want, but I don't want it. Please me perfectly. Be the perfect dom for my... Uh, entertainment sub. Flair. yeah for my search thank you uh but what was i talking about with movies uh, you just don't really like him andrew huberman <laughs> just throwing that out there go to our sunscreen thank you yeah. to well my friend for the super chat Aww. thanks so much for sharing your world and making deconstruction and my work days a little less lonely thank Aww. you so much that's really kind um also, well my friend you've done it again thank you oh i get just it um, sorry guys it's 420 um we will also be taking super chats via venmo if you don't have youtube super chat or you don't want youtube to take a cut we will read from both so i, I just remembered where i was going with movies and how a lot of movies can be so boring for me and also a lot of music where i'm like all of this could have been solved by an adult conversation about non-monogamy I, I hate when the whole script the whole premise relies <laughs> on something so like just a conversation that realistically would have been had in these characters lives just not yeah. happening or them just there's like a weird amount that people just keep secrets for no real reason in movies or like our series of hijinks will happen. And it's like, you would still make sure you had that conversation. You would think, unless you're Andrew Huberman. Yes. Okay. I see the, <laughs> I, I'm seeing the segue beautifully. Well. <laughs> Andrew could have it's, just had, you know, a conversation. Obviously we're or joking two. when we keep calling him like a polyamorous king because this is not polyamorous, <laughs> just cheating. Um, but this is bringing up an important conversation about polysaturation that I think sometimes needs to be had in the poly community. So yeah, thank you, Daddy Huberman. You're the light in our eyes, our vitamin D. <laughs> Let's find out how many girls it actually was. Cause I'm like, I think it's like four it's to too many. six. It's way too many. <clears throat> and the vibe that I got reading the articles was that they all found him to be like a very emotionally engaging partner. I didn't I didn't do like a ton of super digging, crucify me, okay? We this is a conversation we're all having together. I'm not the one who has to read Amber, Andrew Huberman facts all day, okay? So, anyway, they all from the gist I got from the one article I read, it seemed like they all thought he was a pretty like emotionally engaging yeah. partner who was like attentive and interested and He's an empath. <laughs> and he's such an empath that he accidentally embroiled himself in a five person <laughs> scheme yes a whole scheme. five oh. it doesn't the thing that's interesting is it doesn't sound like it's five people you know in the beginning when like there's five people you're kind of going on dates with it's like these were five relationships where he was very much like showing up as an emotionally involved partner like he and he even said on his podcast he's not so much a sex addict he's a love addict so I think it was, you know, he wasn't just some fuck boy. He was like addicted to. That's what I would say if I was a fuck energy. boy who got caught, though. <laughs> no, but you can't. He had too big of a heart. <laughs> well, it's I've heard from the text, which we'll have to look at. Um, but like the, just the wet well, first of all, I've heard that he talks very clinically. You know, like I am feeling empathy for you, but I'm yeah. like honestly, that's how oh. everyone I know talks. So like that's fine. <laughs> um, but also, he's, he's like, like a very emotionally engaged partner. He's not just like, hey, babe, can I hit you up tonight? He's very much like wanting to be a primary partner to and five And maybe women. if he was, he could get away with it. That's the thing. And he probably yeah. could be and probably get away with it. If he, he was just, just like, hey, listen, fucking... I'm actually a polyamorous daddy king, neuroscience daddy king. And this is just Take who I am me. and how it is. It's like, yeah, maybe maybe this is will ultimately good be good for him to be like okay there's like a need and a lifestyle here that i could curate rather than like stuffing down and shaming down and controlling mm -hmm. and because he is so married to that like kind of conservative heteronormative family life and way of being generally structured don't you think like that's kind of a thing we've always talked about with him is he does like he has there is like threads of conservatism and like traditional values running through his content. Even though he's at he is Stanford, Christian. which, you know, yeah. I, well, actually Stanford does have some uh, spooky roots. 
What's in like eugenics kind of oh that don't they all uh, yeah, yeah, right it's all kind of got that tone the past is murky in it um what is the thing hermione has where because she wants a to mud take blood so, no tana <laughs> don't be disgusting where she wants to take so many classes that she can like turn back time with a neck is it a neck back turn a time, back time someone knows a what i'm talking turner. about was it a time turner a tina time had? turner well I think Andrew Huberman just needs a Tina Time Turner because he's just like <laughs> Hermione with classes. He just loves women. He loves learning about women. Yeah, he does. Oh, except they're like, do you love women if you're just like lying to them and no, deceiving them constantly? Yeah, it's a personal high, ch you know, you're yeah. about, there's clearly, you're getting a lot of dopamine from the chase. <sighs> I'm like, two. <laughs> Two, I could maybe understand. It doesn't make it like ethical to cheat with one, but I'm just like, what is the different dysfunction coming into play that creates five? Most people would just do two, won't they? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah. A lot to juggle. That is a lot to juggle. And have you seen the clips of where he's like literally in an interview with somebody and they're like, they're talking about cheating and he's like, he's like, you know, more than five would be like way too much for the average person. And, and he was like, like even and he literally is like, Unless, you know, they had multiple phones for each one. <laughs> like, you just straight face. <laughs> I cannot like, wait wow. for every reveal he's ever made on the podcast to be compiled, compiled into someone's YouTube video. Yeah. Um. Also, thank you to Kathleen for sending us a Venmo super chat. They said for Paddington 2 on Blu-ray. Just kidding. That's a joke from the Jared Alpha video. <laughs> Thanks for watching that one. Uh -huh. Um, also, yes, it is called a time turner. Clearly, Rowling's brilliant mind is so good at naming conventions. <laughs> and I love that they just gave it to like a fifth grader. They were like, you need to do more homework. So, so yeah, like you can alter grade. the fabric of space time. Sure. What? Should we get into it? Should we learn more? Why didn't she go kill Voldemort then? Baby Voldemort. Do homework? That's different because that is about you're only allowed to do the butterfly effect if it's for homework. Well, <laughs> that is homework, clearly cool. stated in time law. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we can't read the New York Magazine article because it requires a subscription. But in an alarming expose, several... I think that's the one I read, but I didn't subscribe, so riddle me that. Hmm. Several women have come forward accusing neuroscientist and celebrated podcaster Andrew Huberman of manipulation, bizarre behavior, and infidelity that may have led to a sexually transmitted infection in at least one of them. Yikes. Um, published by New York Magazine, this deep dive into the dis disparate public and private lives of the Stanford University neuroscientist illustrates a jarring portrait of a man who promotes physical and mental health and wellness, but engaged in bizarre interpersonal behavior, including secretly dating five women simultaneously. Okay, so much of the story apparently centers around this woman who the article is calling Sarah, who spent years dating him in what she believed to be an exclusive relationship. So she thought, you know, we're monogamous, it's us. Um, and it says, along with accusing the 48 year old podcaster of obfuscating about his other relationships, Sarah described Huberman as being intense and controlling, including in a particularly unhinged twist, constantly relitigating her romantic and reproductive decisions from back before they were together. What? <laughs> like, as in, constantly making her talk about relitigating like past people she slept with or being on birth control what is what did, i i would have to know what that context meant oh apparently andrew huberman said oh because it sounds like that that woman had children at one point she accused the podcaster of saying that the second of her two children was a mistake like apparently Huberman was just, was just like weighing in on her, the fact that she had kids and being like, your second child. It's just a what? crime to say that some people are mistakes now. You can't just say that about <laughs> someone's kid these days. Mistake and well, I'm going to be in trouble the next time I'm at Walmart. <laughs> I'm just handing those out like pretzels. I'm like, mistake, mistake. Okay, I really want to read this Every original article. Being so precious and valuable. How can you not get like one free article? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just trying to go to the original because I feel like this Yahoo article is a little bit. Bit Yahoo. <laughs> like, what's even going on here? Andrew. Pretty much, people named Andrew. You need to just get, just check yourself. Yes, cheating. Okay, exactly. just in general. <laughs> your name is Andrew. This is your call from the universe. So just do some introspection, do some journaling. Be like, is there anything that I'm like stuffing down and perhaps like uh, allowing to fall apart and seek outlet in other 
ways that aren't good for me or for the people that I care about or who are involved in my life. Maybe, maybe. Just Don't you think given that it's five, it, there must be some element of like him getting off on how much he's juggling, which would make sense for him, right? He Everything does seem like, is like he's max, juggling max, max. a lot and a lot of heavy. I'm just like, if, if there's five, there's surely you could just like instantly cut two of them. You know which two you'd cut, you know, like just do, go, go three even. I just think five is so excessive. They all thought he was monogamous. Um, Wild. Maybe he was like, oh, no. I, I, apparently I he also gave her HPV. Mm. Um, through his representative, Huberman claimed that he has never tested pos positive for HPV. Damn. Which technically has to be true since, as the magazine notes, there doesn't exist an approved test for HPV in men. Oh, I didn't know that. They can't test for HPV in men. Touch test oh, women. interesting. Mm. Uh, he apparently has a penchant for disappearing, sometimes for days on end, and has done so not just with people he was romantically involved with, but to colleagues as well. Oh, it's, are, this is bizarre. This is, okay, well... It's a more weird one than we normally are get. Are you not allowed to disappear for a couple days? Yeah, into the forest. Yeah. To just meet a wizened the old bridge troll and glean something new. That's what I'm talking about. If we're not doing that for our art, Except what we are know we doing he's, at all? he's disappearing to go be with these other women, right? He probably has like That's a weird it, thing yeah. where he needs multiple lives playing out. He's like Ramdas pre Ramdas, like when Ramdas was a, a, you know, a college professor psychology mm. professor i guess i've never really just like seen Ramdas also in Andrew Hewitt. quietly well no just like that type of yeah, yeah. academic who's yeah. just a pretty traditional academic despite being at stanford someone weigh in with how where stanford falls generally on the liberal spectrum i listen to people like uh sapolsky the uh neurobiologist he's really fascinating um and definitely would fall on what i would consider like a more liberal side and definitely like psychedelically informed and i think uh, Daddy Hubes is a bit late to even the psychedelics game. Maybe he's about to go down his healing journey. He probably should. He probably does need to. Because this does seem like one of those like, oop, ooh. That's... Wait, this is actually so strange though because normally it's just like celebrities caught cheating, right? Mm. This says in one anecdote, Andrew is said to have left anthropologist and investigative journalist Scott Carney alone in his house with his dog for a day and a half after he invited him to go camping. It was extremely <laughs> weird, that guy said. He does have a daddy dump kink. He, it's a, yeah! It's a, he's like, I'll be your dad. I'll take you camping. And then like day of, he's gone. Mm. Nowhere to be found. And- Leaving him in his house with his dog. That is wild. For a day and a half. With his dog? So, like trapping his colleague in his house, having to look after his dog. That is nuts. That's and you're so supposed to be going weird. camping? Did he just go camping alone? Okay. He... But he says it's like traffic or stuff. Do we know that that's actually the times that he was cheating? Oh my God, or is Alex it just. just sent us the article. Thank, oh, thank you, you so Alex. much, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, if it's five, let's read the, let's read the original article. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Let's get informed. Get educated. Mm. We're educating ourselves. I'm just skipping kind of the intro to who he is. Uh, Very neoliberal institution. Yeah, that's the idea that I, that's the feeling I get from it. Okay, this is interesting. Um, oh, did you know that? Um, okay, I'll read this. As an adolescent, Huberman says, he endured the difficult divorce of his parents, a Stanford professor who worked in the tech industry and a children's book author. The period after the separation was, he says, one of pure neglect. His father was gone, his mother totally checked out. We've all been there. <laughs> he was forced around age 14 to endure a month of youth detention, a situation that was not a jail, but harrowing in its own right. The thing that really saved me, Huberman said, was this therapy thing. I was like, oh shit. I do have to choke back a little bit here. It's a crazy thing to have somebody say, listen, like to give you the confidence, like we're going to figure this out. We're going to figure this out. Okay. So he's basically talking about how like he's gone to therapy. He's gone to therapy, guys. We can trust That's him. That's an improvement from normal guys. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, 
Um, apparently he's been in therapy since high school. He obviously always has sort of uh, psychiatrist people and therapists on his podcast. Um, mm -mm -mm. Do you think he's talking about it in therapy? Is he confiding in anyone? Um, Alex just sent us a PDF, so I don't even have to scroll <laughs> through the images. You are amazing. Okay, so. Therapy, therapy, therapy. Can't wait for Alex to be our full-time boss. I know. Okay. Some of Andrew's earliest Instagram posts are of his lab. We see smiling undergraduates slicing, staining, and prepping brains and a wall, a wall of framed science publications in which Huberman authored papers appear. Where's this paragraph going? Um, just get to the allegations, honestly. Um, okay. Allegate me. But then he had a partner, Sarah, which is not her real name. Sarah was someone who could talk to anyone about anything. She was dewy and strong in her mid-40s, though she looked a decade younger with two small kids from a previous relationship. She had old friends who adored her and no trouble making new ones. She came across as scattered in the way she jumped readily from topic to topic in conversation, losing the thread before returning to it, but she was in fact extremely organized. She was a woman who kept track of things. She was an entrepreneur who could organize a meeting, a skill she would need later for reasons she could not possibly have predicted. Just say she's a Virgo, let's go. Uh, Sarah's relationship with Andrew began in February 2018 in the Bay Area where they both lived. He messaged her on Instagram. I love that he slid into the DMs and that's how Andrew Huberman got his girlfriend. And said... <laughs> he said, damn, that body of yours is... What is Adam <laughs> Levine saying? Yeah. And said he owned a home in Piedmont, a wealthy city separate from Oakland. That turned out to not be precisely <laughs> true. He <lived> <laughs> It's like... Hello, did I mention that I have a house, a home in Piedmont? <laughs> well, apparently he's also lying because that turned out to not be precisely true. He lived off Piedmont Avenue, which was in Oakland. <laughs> he was courtly and a bit formal and he would later be on the, as he would later be on the podcast. In July, in her garden, Sarah says she asked to clarify the depth of their relationship. They decided, she says, to become exclusive. Uh, Andrew... Okay, both had devoted their lives to healthy living, exercise, good food, good information. They cared about what went into their bodies. Andrew could com command a room and clearly took pleasure in doing so. He was busy and handsome, healthy and extremely ambitious. He gave the impression of working on himself. Throughout their relationship, he would talk about repair and healthy merging. He was <laughs> just every guy in the spiritual community, <laughs> just like wildly abusing their power. Is he a bypass king? <laughs> <laughs> he was devoted to his bull must. Ball Mastiff? Is that a dog? Yeah. Costello, whom he worried over constantly. Was Costello comfortable sleeping properly? Andrew liked to dote on the dog, she says, and he liked to be doted on by Sarah. I was never sitting around him, she says. She cooked for him and felt glad when he relished what she, has, she had made. Sarah was willing to have unprotected sex because she believed they were monogamous. On Thanksgiving in 2018, Sarah planned to introduce him to her parents and close friends. She was cooking... Andrew texted repeatedly to say he would be late, then later. According to a friend, he was just, oh yeah, I'll be there. Oh, I'm going to be running hours late. And then of course, all of these things were planned around his arrival and he just kept going, oh, I'm going to be late. And then it's the end of the night and he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. This and this happened. Huberman disappearing was something of a pattern. Friends, girlfriends, and colleagues describe him as hard to reach. The list of reasons for not showing up included a book, Time stamping the podcast, Costello, wildflowers, wild, wildfires, sorry, and a meetings tunnel. He is flaky and doesn't respond to things, says his friend Brian, a health influencer. <laughs> and if you can't handle that, <laughs> a health influencer who has collaborated with him on breathing protocols. Wow, their collabs must be so fun. <laughs> a health influencer who has gone. And if you can't handle that, Andrew is definitely not someone you want to be close to. He is, he in some ways disappeared says David Spiegel, a Stanford psychiatrist. I'm, he in some ways disappeared. I mean, I recently got a really nice email from him, which I was touched by. I really was. He in some ways disappeared. I don't know where I was going with that. Um, before he was famous, he invited a Colorado-based journalist and anthropologist, Scott Carney, to his home. The two would go camping and discuss their mutual interest in actionable science. It had been Huberman who had reached out initially, and the two became friendly over phone and email. Huberman confirmed Carney's list of camping gear, sleeping bag, bug spray boots. When Carney got there, the two did not go camping. 
Huberman simply disappeared for most of a day and a half while Carney stayed home with Costello. It's just like a long con <laughs> to get him to look after his dog while he goes to see one of the women. Because this is 2018, so he'd already be with Sarah. So I'm assuming the grift has begun. And he's just like, but what is it that is like in him that, I guess because he's probably maybe always got away with it because of the type of man he is and people call him fastidiously smart or whatever. Prestigiously smart. Oh. But I'm like, what would possess us? Wouldn't you be anxious as hell knowing that someone's just in your house? Like, where the fuck is he? Like, I, yeah. I couldn't enjoy myself if that's the con. No, that feels that's, like that a is lot of weird. a man and feeling a lot of pressure to act. Yeah. That's so <sighs> strange. Especially he re he reached out to him and then this all ended up just being away from him to look after his dog for a day. <laughs> He's and a just half. sitting there on the porch, so sad. This is so hat weird. a droop with his little fishing pole. He putted around Huberman's place, buying a juice, putted walking through a the can. neighborhood, <laughs> waiting for him to return. It was extremely weird, says Carney. Huberman texted from elsewhere saying he was busy working on a grant. Even that, I'm you can't just be like, sorry, I'm working on a grant, enjoy my dog. <laughs> When you're supposed to We're go camping, camping, what the fuck? Wait, um, was he working on the grant or was a he? A spokesperson for Huberman says he clearly communicated to Carney that he went to work. Doubt it. Eventually, instead of camping, the two went on a few short hikes. It's weird no matter what. Even if he had just like showed up and then he's like, <sighs> I actually have to go do some work. Will you look after my dog for a day and a half? Indefinitely without me telling you when I'm going to come back. God. This Even is why I don't have a dog so that I never have to do that to anybody. <laughs> Even when physically present, Huberman can be hard to track. His friend said, I don't have total fidelity to who Andrew is. There's always a little unknown there. He describes Andrew as an amazing thought partner with almost total recall. Total recall does not keep love alive. That's the thing. <laughs> you can't Smoke to let forget. a relationship That's rest on total recall. Total recall. Yeah. Um, be sharp. Damn it, I just lost the thing. Let me just find it again. Welcome to your first Zelf Live. Yeah, we already filmed a whole video today, so sorry if we're a bit low energy. Who's low energy? Not me. Not Tana. Not me and all my sartorial Need flares and uh, monstrous flamboyance, as was recently coined. We got one of the best. This is a long article, um, but I'm down to keep going. Sure. There's lots of... God, uh, it's got to be so weird just on in for any person this is not a justification of any behavior by anybody just saying that it's weird that at you at a certain point of fame just means that like the whole world is going to be processing your yeah. interpersonal things and but this is an especially does, bizarre story that's why i like it yeah i guess i'm there's like the part of me that's like oh my and this is probably why I'm not successful like Andrew Huberman because I don't have the drive or don't have what it takes to like really be that person. But maybe being that person is what sends all these people doing things that are regrettable. Who knows? I've done things that are regrettable. That's what I'm saying is like, I'm a flake too. And yeah, I cancel flakes, last minute. Like this, and like I've this. struggled in polyamory and like, you know, he's not but, I, but he's, not, he's not doing well. You know, what I'm saying is like, Generous. I don't know. I just like don't yeah. know enough about the situation. I'm always like, no, probably yeah. empathizing too hard well i i mean everyone like, is the way that they are for reasons right like yeah, um, yeah. it's he sounds i think what, just what's interesting about this story is like this is like he is definitely not who we all kind of thought we thought he was very sort of um stoic and able to and and organ and i guess he is organized but it's like this is just so far outside the bounds you've got to be organized like, to be having six affairs going i like polyamory with two people is like a calendar calendaring is like your next part-time job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Six people. And you gotta just, be organized. He talks about being honest and like good, you know, and he raves about therapy and healing. And it's like, obviously this is, it's not, this is not healthy relationships, right? Yeah, it's yeah, even yeah. just with your colleagues, you're inviting them to go camping and then you're just ditching them for a day and a half. And they're like, what the fuck is happening? Like well, that person's not lying. The spokesperson being like, he said he was going to work. Well, I'm that's like, what I'm, well, so that's the thing is like, he, maybe he did communicate in some way that he was going to work and it's kind it's of, still, and, but it, and we're not sure, right. That that was like him going to cheat. Yeah. I, I'm, just, whether or not he cheat, I'm a, that part's irrelevant, but it's just like really weird to like, 
reach out to someone, be like, I really want to go camping with you to get everything ready. Like when you show up for camping with all your gear, like you are going camp, like it's a big mm. deal. Do you know what I mean? It's not like a light thing. Like, do you want to grab lunch? Oh, I'm running late. It's like, no, you had a camping trip prepared. Hear me out. We're about to go camping. You and me. I Ray show up shows up in the chat and he's like, <laughs> hey, if you, Samantha, I will give you $10,000 if we can have lunch today. And you're like, Ray, I knew this day would come. And then uh, you would support me. Yeah. I mean, it's so yeah. weird to have a colleague show up yeah. to be so <laughs> self important. <laughs> like it was very clear that it wasn't communicated to this colleague how long he was going to be gone for. He claims he didn't even say where he was going. It was just all very vague, which multiple people are corroborating that he kind of just has this energy of like, oh, I'm caught up in a thing. It's like, it doesn't matter what he's doing. The cheating is almost a secondary piece to how weird it is to just feel that entitled to people's time and apparently like free, like uh, coerced dog sitting. You know what I mean? <laughs> Covers, that would like, be a nightmare for me just personally. Coerce someone I would watching be watching your dog for a day and a half, <laughs> and then you're not having any communication with them about what the fuck's happening. Like, I would be like that too. I'm not going to leave this dog, right? Yeah. But it's like, what the fuck? Like, that's the interesting thing that's being painted here. And I, I think the cheating is, you know, there's, it's all, it's all one thing, but like, uh, very. Very interesting. This is like not the sensible neuroscientist we all know. Yeah, okay, Lisa, I'm so sorry. He flew across the country for the camping trip. Oh my God. <laughs> There's got to be something that it's like he seems to like really get off on being able to just like take people's time and attention in a way that is like not normal. Uh, or maybe he's just like me and gets off on just canceled plans in general. But it's <laughs> even worse than canceled plans. It Do you is. know that what I mean? So it's like a crazy. level of fucked up. <sighs> okay. Uh, Andrew, I, Hume. I am sure I have let down people who have flew across the country. Wait, I don't know if anyone's flown across the, across the country. You are being me. excessive, and you're needing. I end. just, I guess, I know. I just, I feel. I'm not saying he's. E I'm simply saying it's bizarre, and That's that true. he is not who we thought is he it was. A crime to be I'm really not passing judgment world. on what made him this way. You know, you you know yeah, our philosophy yeah, 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 on yeah. life. I've, it's like, it's just super bizarre, and it's so not in line with his image publicly and his brand and his sensibility. Yeah, if someone flew across the country for this thing that you planned together, you they should at least walk away feeling like, even if it wasn't camping, that there was like proper attention and mm -hmm. reciprocal energy well, there. They went and on two short hikes. Oh. <laughs> I hope well. you enjoyed this. He's, what, he's just like, sorry. Like, this isn't a random situation. This is not an isolated incident. This is just like how he is constantly. Okay, um, so apparently his spokesperson, Huberman said he like declined to be interviewed for this, but his team is claiming that he didn't become exclusive with Sarah until late 2021, that he was not doted on, that tasks between, between him and Sarah were shared based on mutual agreement and proficiency, that their Thanksgiving plans were tentative, as Thanksgiving plans generally are, and that he <laughs> maintains a very busy schedule and shows up to the vast majority of his commitments. Oh, Damn. Yeah, you should always be able to see that's the thing. I'm like, you should always be able to bounce on Thanksgiving. That's just my personal philosophy. <laughs> I agree. But if you told a partner, again, a partner who you also told you said you were exclusive with and you're not. So and that's you're not. this is just yeah, what yeah. like it is kind of painting quite a narcissistic picture of this person. Yeah. If you're and then she's reaching out to him on Thanksgiving Day and he's just kind of being vet. He obviously had no plan to be there at any point. And he's just like, Oh, I'm running a bit like, like it's just all so weird. This is so strange. And thank you, Rachel, for the super chat. I always especially love when super chats are in pounds. I guess I always feel so guilty for how much I'm able to like extend myself to other people sometimes. Yeah. Like in always in communication. So, but you would never tell five girls they were your exclusive girlfriend. No, Because that's that true. would get you into shit. <laughs> that would, that, yeah. Right? There are ways to manage. Again, I, I don't have the recall enough. That would, <laughs> that would be no good. I have to be honest because the memory isn't there. <laughs> I. It's like he's got some kind of mastermind kink where he's like, because he has such amazing recall, he's like, how many women can I put? How many balls can I juggle? Okay. That, and they were all together at the same time? Well, let's read on. Apparently, just so this nuts. is Sarah. When they fought, she says, it was typically because Andrew would fixate on her past choices. The men she had been with before him, the two children she had had with another man. I experienced his rage, Sarah recalls, as two to three days of yelling in a row. When he was in this state, he would go on until 11 or 12 at night and sometimes start again at two or three in the morning. Damn. Again, just a more... Um, less capable of self-soothing than we would have imagined from Andrew Huberman. Self-soothing and also reason if he's just like yelling at her for days and 
on end Ooh. about her past relationship choices. Yeah. Not the stable man we thought. The relationship struck Sarah's friends as odd. At one point, Sarah said, I just want to be with my kids and cook for my man. I was like, who says that? Says a close friend. I mean, I've known her for 30 years. She's a powerful, decisive, strong woman. We grew up in this very feminist community. That's not a thing either of us would say. Damn, Andrew. Another, I hope this is a good reality check. <laughs> another friend found him stressful to be around. I try to be open-minded, she said. I don't want to be the most negative, non-sportive friend just because of my personal observations and dis disgust over somebody. When they were together, he was buzzing, anxious. He's like, oh, my dog needs his blanket this way. And I'm like, your dog is just laying there and super cozy. Why are you being weird about the blanket? <laughs> uh, Sarah was not the only person who experienced the extent of Andrew's anger. In 2019, Carney, camping guy, sent Huberman materials from his then forthcoming book, The Wedge, in which Huberman appears. He asked Huberman to confirm the parts in which he was mentioned. For months, Huberman did not respond. Carney sent a follow-up email. If Huberman did not respond, he would assume everything was accurate. In 2020, after months of saying he was too busy to review, Huberman called him and Carney says, came at him in a rage. I've never had a source I thought was friendly go bananas, says Carney. Oh, sorry, I thought that was the rage. Screaming, Huberman threatened to sue and accused Carney of violating Navy OPSEC. Um, it had become by then one of the most perplexing relationships of Carney's life. I did briefly date is even a strong word, but there was this guy in college who I swear would do things like we would have plans to go to lunch together. We'd be walking to lunch together. What, this is actually just one incident. He like ran into the bathroom and was like, meet you there. And then he just never showed up. What? And I was like, what the, who is this guy? Why is he like this? But was, there was a few things like that that happened. Whoa. Yeah, Tidy that was like syndrome. the most extreme. I don't think he was like weird like this. Yeah, but that's weird. It was like he just ran into some friend and then just didn't feel any responsibility to like join me for lunch. But I can't get over Andrew Huberman inviting, flying somebody out for a camping trip and then just ditching him with the dog. <laughs> Damn. 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 Uh, so again, we're still diving into Carney's relationship. That year, Carney agreed to Huberman's invitation to swim with sharks on an island off of Mexico. He's going to make it up to him. Oh my God, Tana, listen to this. <laughs> First, Carney would have to spend a month of his summer getting certified in Denver. He did at considerable expense. <laughs> Huberman then canceled the trip a day before they were set to leave. I oh think Andrew God. likes building up people's expectations, says Carney. And then he actually enjoys the opportunity to pull the rug out from under you. That's what I'm, that's what it seems like. There's something there where he's Damn. getting off on this behavior because to a normal person, even if you're just trying to like get freedom in weird ways and like sometimes you can't keep your commitments like we've all been there, you would be so stressed out by like putting so many people in this situation on purpose. Like this is not normal behavior. This is not just like a classic flake. Yeah, it's, it does seem like a specific kind of narcissist. I know we're not supposed to call people that. Um, in January 2021, that's when Huberman launched his podcast. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Mm. Sorry, I'm just trying to find what's worth. Feel free to just be riffing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm this whole thing could have this whole thing could have been summed up in an email or probably actually a meeting in this one. And it's, again, it's just saying, uh, my honey, my love, my sweetheart, uh, I am but a mere primate. And as a primate, I often feel sexual inclinations toward people who are not you. And uh, I would actually like to satisfy those desires, but in a way that is open and unshamed and... I think but it's even bigger than that. It is. It's, even <laughs> in his platonic relationships, he's getting off on making elaborate plans where people have to go to extensive lengths to show up for him and then being like, oh, sorry, I can't. He's getting off on disappointing people. Oof. Is, what's that? What kind or, of kink is that? Or it might be just like one of those, you know, because he's the hype, the get in luck, productive, optimizing your lifestyle type of guy right and he's working out and he's doing the thing and maybe he's just to be that like a, uh stretched himself so thin that it probably comes as a great real like relief call it getting off 
by canceling is, canceling a plan but why like is that. he signing up to have five girls on the go that do you know what i mean there's yeah. there's something there that's bigger than because it's like he's choosing yeah he's definitely got he's, issues there's yeah, no doubt about he's it he's putting I'm himself in the it's someone also, said called him my idol like i, I don't really care like that about yeah it's like, i think that's i'm here for science <laughs> i like neuroscience so great but like i don't like have to uphold him as like a great moral exemplar or anything don't you think it's just wild he's like obviously his, got issues <laughs> his whole thing is like optimizing your time like treating your own time as so sacred and like make and then he's so flippant about other people's time he even he's actively belittling of other people's time but his whole thing is like every minute must be optimized and must be my own to claim in the pursuit of glory <laughs> and, science. and science i did get the vibe when i watched uh he did one he did an interview with somebody on somebody else's show and they were talking about prayer and I just got the recommended clip about prayer because the algorithm loves to send me that kind of thing. And um, he was talking about how it becomes, you can't just, there are some things that you can't just like push down and that like you need prayer to overcome those things. And I was like, what things, Andrew? And I was like, instantly like, like the Mormons like, porn <laughs> he's watching porn and he feels guilty about it or you know some other animal indulgence that when zoomed out is actually like not that absurd it's just like normal behavior when you really are like oh that's just literally primates being primates and it's not this like huge moral failing then it just can be what it is but if you're this like religious person as i was who was like hyper repressed then Porn is the source of deep shame that's like, I gotta pray to get through this, otherwise I'm gonna act like a monkey and I shouldn't be a monkey because I gotta optimize and I gotta perform and I gotta get through this. Yeah. In August 2021, Sarah says she read Andrew's journal and discovered a reference to cheating. She was, she says, gutted. He wrote about it in his journal. Yeah, and Aww. obviously cannot endorse ever reading someone else's journal. But it uh, sounds like she had pretty good reason to be suspicious. That's the thing is like everyone You're who I know who it. has done that was yeah. like found the thing. It was yeah. like, I wouldn't have done this unless I really, really felt in my bones that something was happening. And if they're playing with you, they, you know, they left their journal out. You I guess, fair yeah. game. But yeah, don't, I guess. He I, said, I hear you are saying you are angry and hurt. He texted her. I will hear you as much and for as long as needed for us. I'm hearing you say you he's are. He's such an hurt. empath. I love that though. I love how he's like so emotionally available to like process the cheating. That definitely sounded like a canned response to me. I know. Like, I am. I am here. <clears throat> I. I am exercising my emotive faculties and am reciprocating interest and matching your emotional tone. Mm -hmm. um, I love this comment from Rachel, and also thank you for the super chat. This is the thing though, optimizing your time if you take it to the extreme happens by eating into other people's time and using other people. Yeah, exactly. Fucked up. I will hear you as much as needed. OMG, help, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andrew and Sarah wanted children together. And then this is the article saying this. Optimizers sometimes prefer not to conceive naturally. One can exert more control when procreation involves a lab. Sarah began the first of several rounds of IVF. Damn, that's why they were doing IVF, just for optimization. Interesting. For optimization Expensive. purposes? Design a baby? Whoa. In 2021, she tested positive for a high-risk form of HPV. Ooh. Uh, she said she'd tested regularly for 10 years, and she'd never tested positive. Um... Ooh, apparently in an episode of his podcast, Andrew Huberman said to evol evolutionary psychologist David Buss, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about truth telling and deception. This is an episode called How Humans Select and Keep oh. Romantic Partners in Short and Long Term. I cannot wait to see all this shit come out of yeah. like all the self tells. Mira said brings a whole new meaning to Huberman lab. <laughs> <laughs> Could you tell us, Andrew asked, about how men and women leverage deception versus truth-telling and communicating some of the things around mate choice selection? <laughs> and then Andrew said, let's talk about infidelity in committed relationships. He said, laughing. I'm guessing it does happen. Men who have affairs tend to have affairs with a larger number of affair partners, says Buss. Um, and so, which then by definition can't be long-lasting. 
You can't have the long-term affairs with six different partners. Yeah, said Andrew, unless he's, um, and here Andrew looked into the distance, juggling multiple uh, phone accounts or something of That's that sort. That's what I was talking He's about. like, uh, just off the top of my head. <laughs> 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 right, right, right. And some men try to do that, but I think it could be very taxing, said Bus. Even just the fact that this was like an intellectual conversation between two men and they're like, yeah, but I bet some guys have a lot of phones. And he's like, yes, many men try to do that. It's just like a serious exchange. <laughs> yeah, we were all like, they couldn't be serious. <laughs> Ooh, according to Sarah, so they started living together, right? In uh, 2022, she relocated Whoa. her family to Malibu to be with him. Whoa, they're and living together. According to her, Andrew's rage intensified with cohabitation. He fixated on her decision to have children with another man. It's also, I know it's not always the case, but a lot of the time, this just like obsession with being such a strong alpha man is just seems to so often be rooted in insecurity. And it's like he p pitches himself as this like super secure, reasonable alpha. But it's like he's like so fragile that he's like obsessing over his girlfriend's past partners and like getting genuinely angry about it. Like it's genuinely feeling enough of like enough of a threat to his like sense of self and security that it's creating actual rage in him. He says he told her that being with her was like bobbing for apples in feces. The pattern of your 11 years, while rooted in subconscious drives, he told her in December 2021, creates a nearly impossible set of hurdles for us. You have to change. Damn, that's like uh, the person who is like way too high and is like, the pattern of your 11 years, while rooted in subconscious drives, and you're just like, you need to apologize for that behavior the next day. You shouldn't have said that. Damn. Speaking from personal experience, when you <laughs> psychoanalyze too much. But this one is especially mean. <laughs> Uh, Sarah was in fact changing. She felt herself getting smaller, constantly appeasing. I mean, yeah, this is starting to sound like a pretty standard, like narcissist, like relationship with a narcissist. If you're feeling, you're like shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. Also reminds me of Keith Raniere. Yeah. Well. Keith Raniere promising to, imp <sighs> they're all closer to like, it's different by degrees. It's just different by degrees. And as he would have gained yeah. more power, had this not come out, I wonder what would have happened. I'm never going to be an alpha. <laughs> I got snipped. I was like, I don't want to imprint name yeah. nobody. <laughs> <sighs> okay, uh, his spokesperson is like denying all this basically is the gist throughout. The first three rounds of IVF didn't produce healthy embryos. In the spring of 2022, enraged again about her past. Remember, they've been together since 2018 and he's still so enraged about her past. In what year? They got together in 2018. This is 2022. They've been together for four years by this point. And you're still, what? And he just rages at her all the time because he's like, you've made horrible decisions in the past. And she's getting smaller and smaller in this relationship and he's sporadic and not showing up that much. I mean, a picture is being painted. So I'm imagine they're like cohabitating. She's probably expecting him to take on maybe a more paternal role. And he's like, this is your kid, your problem. Like I have my work life and my life. And like you made the mistake of having kids and I did not. I only promise, but I don't follow through. But that's not what he's doing. He's, he's raging just at like her. Raging, Jesus. And he was raging before they lived together. Like the kid wasn't his problem at all before yeah, they lived just, together. Why is he so mad about it? It's fragile masculinity, I guess. Or he just has some issue with like he sees her as having made choices too flippantly in life, right? Like not have made intentional enough choices. What, like moving to Malibu for you? <laughs> like having a second kid before you met him. Why do you gotta be mad? I, That's like, this who she really is. About like, you. I know. What, what? Don't date her then. Yeah, exactly. Oh, this is so gross. In the spring of 2022, enraged again about her past, Andrew asked Sarah to explain in detail what he called her bad choices, most especially having her second child. She wrote it out and read it aloud to him. His spokesperson denies this. Well, if a spokesperson denies it. <laughs> that is insane behavior. Whoa. Okay. I think this is a psychologist they're quoting. Um, I think this is a psychologist talking to the article who has maybe been on his show. And they said, I think it's important to recognize that we might have a model of who someone is or a model of how someone should conduct themselves. And if they do something that is out of sync with that model, it's like, well, that might not necessarily be on that person. Maybe it's on us. Our model was just off. Yeah, there's a point in there. There is a point. Huberman's specialty lies in a narrow field, visual system wiring. Yeah, that is important to always point out. Like Huberman isn't like an expert on all these subjects, but you would just assume that someone with that level of rigorous scientific training 
like would be pretty reliable and you know mm -hmm. but it does say his detractors note that Huberman extrapolates wildly from limited animal studies, posits certainty where there is ambiguity, and stumbles when he veers too far from his narrow realm of study. But even they will tend to admit that the podcast is an expansive, free compendium of human knowledge. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I learned a lot about remineral. If we're not remineralizing, we are demineralizing. I hear that in your voice in my head daily. And you can <laughs> always be remineralizing. <laughs> Go take your magnesium. Um, okay, I want more about this. Uh, there's a lot of stuff about the lab. It goes into his AG1 sponsorship, which I love. Um, when Sarah had suspicions about Andrew's interactions with another woman, he had a particular way of talking about the woman in question. She says he said the women were stalkers, alcoholics, and compulsive uh. liars. <laughs> He told her that one woman tore out her hair with chunks of flesh attached to it. He told her a story about a woman who fabricated a story about a dead baby to entrap him. A spokesperson denies this. Oh, said the hair story was taken out of context and the dead baby story was uh, denied. Most of the time, Sarah what believed him. What was the context of the hair then? <laughs> it's just like, that, that woman is not my other girlfriend. She's just some crazy bitch who pulled out her hair with chunks of flesh on and gave it to me. That was wow. taken out of context. All right. Okay, so just keep that in mind. I'm just like wondering in what context that could be and like be a normal story. <laughs> yeah, but again, there just reaches a point with stuff like this where context, like the context is irrelevant. The, co the important context here is that I'm the good guy, okay? And you're taking that way out of context. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they went, so basically that August of 2022, this couple, this monogamous couple, went on a camping trip together. Every day he injected the IVF drugs into her stomach. So they are doing IVF together. Do you know what I mean? They're doing this fertility. This was round four of IVF. So she believe he knows that she, it's not, there's no uh, ambiguity about whether they're in a committed relationship. They are, and they're doing IVF. Also, what is with all these guys always wanting to have babies while they're cheating? Just don't get it. Some weird alpha thing. It's um, a, I think it's a deep primate thing. Yeah. I think it's like. Cringe. Sow your seed. So cringe. Um, then later that month, Sarah looked through his phone and found conversations with someone called Eve. Some of them took place during the camping trip they had just taken. Apparently, uh, a text he sent to Eve on a day when he had just injected Sarah with HCG. Your feelings matter, he said. I'm actually very much a caretaker. And later, I'm back on grid tomorrow and would love to see you this weekend. Caught having an affair, Andrew was apologetic. The landscape has been incredibly hard, he said. I let the stress get to me. I defaulted to self-safety. I've also sat with the hardest of feelings. I hear your insights, he said, and I honestly appreciate them. Sarah noticed. <laughs> Thanks for saying that, Mama. Thanks for saying that, for spilling. <laughs> also, just so you know, Eve is an ethereally beautiful actress. Oh. And Eve saw Andrew on Raya in 2020 when he Eve was two years. Eve is the cheaty. The new girlfriend, the yeah. The mistress. Yeah, damn. Well, not she doesn't know if she's being played too, right? Oh, he's so cringe. On their he's leading her to believe that he's not even in a relationship where he's giving he's her just on Raya. fertility. Yeah. Wow. Wait, on, is that a dating app? Yeah, it's a dating app for celebrities. He is pumping he's someone on with a dating the app. IVF chemicals yeah. and yeah, and it's and like, on a dating there app. There are more rules about screenshotting on Raya than regular apps. That's kind of the appeal, but it's certainly not like a closed space. Wow. You know, like people are going to find out. How do you think you're going to get away with that? Listen to how cringe this how is. How do you though. think you're going to get away? <sighs> they so, so he saw her on Raya and messaged on Instagram. They went for a swim in Venice, and he complimented her form. You're definitely on the faster side of the distribution, he said. Stop. How is this man getting five girlfriends? Uh, basically, he was just busy all the time. Like from Eve's perspective, he's just really busy, busy bee. Um, but he, she would call him out for, because apparently he would stand up all his girlfriends all the time. She, he would, she would call him out for standing her up and he'd be like, I'm willing to do the repair work on this or this sucks, but doesn't deter my desire and commitment to see you and establish clear lines of communication and trust. Uh, he, he seemed to Eve to be serious about deepening their relationship with, which lasted on and off for two years. Eve had the impression that he was not seeing anyone else. She was also willing to have unprotected sex. 
As their relationship intensified over the years, he often talked about the family he one day wanted. Our children would be amazing, he said. There's, it's like the Elon Musk thing as well. Like, why do you want to impregnate so many women? He like kind of wants it, but he's like playing. Does Do you think there's a part of him that genuinely wants a family and he's just like, I'll te- a, our A test group and our B test group. I think he would, he talks like chat GPT. He does talk um, like chat GPT. I think he would be genuinely down to get like a bunch of women pregnant a la Elon Musk, a la, okay, like you don't know anything about the Kardashians, but Khloe Kardashian, while she was pregnant with their child, her boyfriend cheated on her and got another girl pregnant, right? Wow. Then there, she decides to forgive him because it's the father of her kid. She, they decide to have another child together. So they, the weekend after they like impregnated the surrogate, he gets another girl pregnant. Like these men have a, like the preg, I don't understand it because I've never been drawn to babies. But there's something there with, I swear these men get off on the pregnancy of it all. Oh, or the riskiness of it all. Control freaks just throwing it all to the wind. Yeah. And like feeling a weird... Oh, but I, it it does it. seem like a weird control thing. Oh, this is going on over years. Yeah. How do you it's how do so you li- like genuinely how do you live with yourself? Like yeah. I would have so many anxiety stress dreams. I know. <laughs> I can't do any level of this kind of no how, schemes. They re- alphas really are a different breed. Okay, they they are built different. They. <laughs> oh my god, this is getting juicy. Um. So he would talk about the family he wanted. He told her, I'm at the stage of life where I truly want to build a family. Um, one time, e- so this is Eve, heard Andrew Huberman say on Joe Rogan that he had a girlfriend. She texted him to ask about it and he responded immediately. He had a stalker, he said. And so his team had decided to invent a partner for the listening the public. The couple's ruse! He's doing the couple He's ruse on the, the Joe ruse! Rogan podcast! The Tim Ballard couple's ruse? Wow. Whoa. In September 2022, Eve noticed that Sarah was looking at her Instagram stories, not commenting or liking, just looking. Impulsively, Eve messaged her. Is there anything you'd rather ask me directly? They set up a call. Fuck you, Andrew, she messaged him. Damn, the girlies got together. Sarah moved out in August 2023, but says she remained in a committed relationship with Huberman. Andrew Huberman's spokesperson says they were separated. At Thanksgiving that year, she noticed he was wiggly every time a cell phone came out at the table, trying to avoid, she suspected, being photographed. She said she did not leave him until December. According to Sarah, the relationship ended as it had started, with a lie. He had been at her place for a couple of days and left for his place to prepare for a Zoom call. They planned to go Christmas shopping the next day. Sarah showed up at his house and found him on the couch with another woman. She could see them through the window. Damn, dog. If you're going to be a cheater, she <laughs> says to me, do not live in a glass house. <laughs> oh, damn. Do you wow. think he lives in a genuinely glass house? Yeah, he house? does. He oh, does. my God. That is so, so poetic and gorgeous. How do, you, how do people think? They, how do you think? They, I, I know. know. I know. This is my how the Cuba men have fallen. <laughs> this is like my ideal form of celebrity gossip is a is a piece like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is delicious to me. But sorry to all the women who are here. On January eleventh, a woman will call Alex began liking all of Sarah's Instagram posts, seven of them in a minute. Sarah messaged her, I think you're friends with my ex, Andrew Huberman. Are you one of the women he cheated on me with? Alex is an intense, direct, highly educated woman who lives in New York. She was sleeping with Andrew and she had no idea there had been a girlfriend. Fuck, she said, I think we should talk. Over the following weeks, the two girls texted. Um, Sounds like they all kind of bonded over how hard it was to stay away from him for some reason that I truly do not understand as a woman. Um, Oh, soon there were others. There was Mary, a dreamy, charismatic Texan he had been seeing for years. Years. Her friends called Andrew breadcrumbs, given his tendency to disappear. There was a fifth woman in LA, funny and fast talking. Uh, Blah, 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 blah. Apparently each of these women is all like really successful and educated and sharp witted. So that's just an interesting piece. Um, Whoa. Sarah said, I haven't slept with anyone but him for six years. Whoa. The women compared time-stamped screenshots of texts and assembled them in an extraordinary record of deception. There was a day in Texas when after Sarah left his hotel, (sighs) Andrew slept with Mary and texted Eve. They found days in which he would text nearly identical pictures of himself to Ah! two of them at the same time. 
Okay, who's never messaged two different guys on Grinder the same the same picture? Be cast the first stone at the glass house. <laughs> not the okay, same. not the same at all. <laughs> Jesus, this is some high level trickery. He's always been a top performer. He has optimized adultery in yeah. just new and horrifying ways. Wow. How do you? How? 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 I just don't get it. I have to do like. Seven yeah. tasks in a day, and I'm like, oh. seven. God, two. <laughs> on March in March 2021, a day of admittedly impressive logistical jujitsu. While Sarah was in Berkeley, Andrew had flown Mary from Texas to LA to stay with him in Topanga. While Mary was there visiting from thousands of miles away, he left her with Costello. Signature move, dog sitting. Oh he drove God. to a coffee shop where he met Eve. They had a serious talk about their relationship. They thought they were in a good place. He wanted to make it work. He doggy dumped again. Again. Daddy doggy dumped. Daddy doggy dumped. <laughs> Phone died. He texted to Mary, who was waiting back at the place in Topanga, and later to Eve. Thank you for being so next, next level he gorgeous did that and to, sexy. He did that Sleep to, while beautiful. He texted Sarah. To Topanga? <laughs> He's like, the girl from Boy Meets World? How could you do that? She's beautiful. Uh, this is nuts. Whoa. Whoa. This is a bit of a Jonah Hill uh, deja vu. In the aggregate, Andrew's therapeutic language took on a sinister edge. It was communicating a commitment that was not real. A prof yeah, and it's one of those things where, be and we've seen this in guys uh, in various communities, but like because they know the lingo, it gives women the false impression, or this kind of people generally, but gives them the false impression that they're honest, you know what I mean? Or just more, cause you're like, this person is so communicative. They're saying yeah, the, all yeah, the yeah. right things. So they're clearly very emotionally intelligent and an emotionally intelligent person wouldn't use that emotional intelligence to manipulate. Your feelings matter. I hear that you are saying you are distressed. Yeah. I will listen for as long as you need. <laughs> Do them daddy doggy dog <laughs> <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. Apparently he's been criticized for having too few women guests on his podcast. This is not like <gasps> your... This is, Sorry, but I just remembered there was an episode he did with a woman once and I can't remember who it was. But I know I, exactly who it is. Who was it? I remember thinking he's like acting weirdly into her in a way that is like not in I alignment. thought that exact thing. I know exactly the one. Or and maybe think I'm thinking of beautiful. Russell Brand. She was blonde, I'm pretty sure. Where he's just That's like... So, yeah, where I'm just like, why are you like live on this podcast revealing how much you like are clearly interested. He was just acting different. He wasn't treating her like a peer like he normally mm. did. There was like, it was so transparent that he was into her. Yeah. <sighs> if he had like kissed like in like a Maddie Easton kind of moment, that would be fine. Kissed? You know, if there was like mutual chemistry that was beautiful for the audiences everywhere. Oh, did he kiss her? No, I'm, I'm just talking. I'm just always comparing myself to Andrew Huberman. Oh, sorry. I, I was thinking of Matt from the 1975. <laughs> 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 um, Same person yes, when in you my kiss mind. Matt Houston, yeah, that's obviously different. Um, most multiple women recall him saying he preferred the kind of relationship in which the woman was monogamous, but the man was not. Oh, I hate it. He told me, says Mary, that what he wanted was a woman who was submissive, who he could slap in the ass in public, and who would be crawling on the floor for him when he got home. There's nothing wrong with wanting that, but wanting it in this way, there is something wrong with it. Yes. <laughs> Again, there are total places for you to do your daddy dumping dumb stuff. Mm. And it's not on vulnerable women who you are manipulating and But it lying sounds to like the manipulation was a part of it for him because it carried over Ooh. to his non romantic life. It's not just a sexual kink, it's an existential kink as a whole. Yeah. Damn. Deep roots. Mm. Icky, icky, icky. This isn't like ghosting someone after two dates on. After Tinder being like, hey, I thought we had potential and actually I just am moving on with my life. This is like years. Again, yeah. how do people this do it? This is an extreme pattern of behavior. It's going into all the episodes where he's basically just like being such a hypocrite. Um, like he did an episode on the dark triad of personality characteristics. So narcissism, psychopathy, and Machiavellianism. Uh, such people feign cooperation, but then cheat on subsequent moves. They view other people as pawns to be manipulated for their own instrumental gains. Uh -oh. So like he, he knows this stuff like, oh, and now we do too. Cursed to all become sociopaths. Just kidding. We don't mm -hmm. have to. Some of you can for, for fun. Uh, Sam, you're getting a lot of comments on the jumper just by the way. Actually, we've both got several. I got comments, this like four but... years ago, and it continues to slay 
engagement wise every time I wear it. Mm. Likewise. Just trying to see what else is oh, juicy about this ago. article. Wow. That is really sad and scary and also so typical. And then it's almost like, come on. If he's been in therapy since he was 14, since the detention center, then I guess he would know therapy speak really well, wouldn't he? Yeah. Why is it always these guys? What, why is it just... Is Apparently it, he told a girl that he often lied to his therapist. We, Eve said we were at dinner once and he told me something personal and I suggested he talk to his therapist. He laughed it off like that wasn't ever going to happen. So I asked him if he lied to his therapist. He told me he did all the time. Cool. <laughs> well, <laughs> at least that means he'd never lie to you, right? Is that a thing? Oof. Oh my God. I remember that episode. When um, Andrew was talk, it was like an episode on narcissism, and Andrew Huberman was talking about how he had a colleague um, that just like uh, like had such an over the top reaction to him being busy, or I can't remember the exact logistics, but he just painted himself as the reasonable. And now, like this lens, and knowing that he's been telling stories like that on the podcast, like painting up his colleagues as like the unreasonable Ooh. ones. Ah. Uh oh. Mm. Um, yeah, the therapy thing still such a huge red flag. Um, I'm like, lie to me, but don't lie to your therapist, okay? Because if you're going to get better and stop lying to me, it's probably going to be through telling the truth to the therapist. <laughs> yeah. So please get better. <laughs> I can just find out the hard way and kick you out of my life. And then years later, be like, am I insulting him too much? I... You know, all my exes are sweet people. <laughs> all of these women are now like in a group together. And Sarah said, this group has radicalized me. There's been so much processing. They are planning a weekend together this summer. Oh. That's This uh, honestly sounds like a great movie premise. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. That's going to be a hell of a trip. And there's going to be so many neuroscience jokes and then clinks of drinks. <laughs> What's Andrew going to do about this? Do you think he'll just keep going as business as usual or think he'll mention he it. might just keep going business as usual that's what i would do if i was his pr person i'd say just keep doing it have this the spokesperson denied a bunch of stuff oh yeah wow 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 mm. well i'm glad it this kind of it also is now making me think about like uh it's just also not this now as i'm thinking about other people like tim ferris who maybe there's been some Mm -hmm. some expose of him and there are like good i mean the episodes. four hour work week is like the yeah yeah, yeah yeah i just but as far as like interpersonal stuff i remember them having a conversation where they were talking about internet like how i again at, with a certain level of fame there's just people with so many different motives and he was like i had to discover that even in dating there was people who were like only going on dates with me because they were already in their head creating the story about dating going on a date with tim ferris that they're going to pitch to uh gawker or whoever like um anyway but then i'm like what degree that i'm sure that there is a level of truth of that but then also a like genuine I say our culture errs more on the side of the guys who are being manip male manipulators and then being like, oh, a bunch of crazy women more often than it is crazy women who are being like, I'm going to just take you down for fun. Mm -hmm. Though we have seen it even in our own community, ex-Mormon community. There's That's grifts true. of that kind out Everything there. Everything happens. Everything yep. exists. But yeah, I, I'm, I guess I'm appreciative of... It's like, because we are really bad at learning the lesson of like, do not put people on a pedestal. Yeah. Do not. And like, it already made us like, I don't know. It's, it's, it was already a bit like icky to me the way some people would talk about Andrew Huberman. So I'm like, he's just some guy who liked it. You know, he's, he's clearly intelligent, but like, it's like absurd to be like, so sold on him. And I don't, I, you know, I definitely have hyped him up, but only, you know, in like a comedic sense. It's yeah. like, again, who but you're cares? Not, like, like, it's not like a guru kind of this or a cult like allegiance people will have, you know, like the to way someone that who they gives them good Elon things. Musk, yeah. yeah. And it's like, we, it seems to especially happen like bro to bro, you know. The world is a boys' club. Let's yeah. face it. <laughs> it's like, don't speak badly about my guru guy, boy boss. The guy who, again, 
gives me the the way that I feel can feel in control of my life, mm-hmm. but not necessarily in healthy ways. I watched some of those alpha boot camp videos today they where they're going to just be so tough on you kids and treat you like such a piece kids? of shit. Yeah, kid and mm-hmm. adults too. The people are paying like a bunch of money to just be like humiliated and abused. And if that's your kink, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But like, I think a lot of it's, I'm like, what is, what is this? setting like the the world is brutal brutal and the only way to deal with it is to become more brutal than the world itself i'm like i don't want to be like this guy i don't want to grow up to be like that person who's yelling and then afterward being like hey i'm only doing this because i love you and i want you to be a leader i'm like Mm -hmm. that's actually a really dumb way to live it's just not great we actually don't need to do that anymore Mm -hmm. it's just the way that i see it and i think that the that's the type the machiavellian culture we're coming out of where it's like i'm the big tough guy who rules and decides everything and people are just little pieces for my scheme do you know what my devastating celebrity come down would be it would be if esther perel got exposed for being bad (laughs) (laughs) that would be a tough one for me that's i I could see myself making apologetics yeah (laughs) Okay, who would you Who's go up yours? to bat yeah. for in a in a who crisis? Would be like your hardest Hank person Green. to get oh. <laughs> Yeah. Let's uh yeah, let's do that as a closing question. That feels like a great way to I just I don't really know. Like uh, there's pretty much nobody who I would be like, mm, "Yep, that sounds well within the range of human possibility." Like you never especially know. If it's it seems a like man, though, people you know are, yeah, mean? especially if like it's like Esther a... Perel probably not. Andrew Huberman, it's not that crazy. Yeah. Because again, she's like she's de-shaming the thing and not that Mm -hmm. you can't like Mm -hmm. also Mm -hmm. leverage Mm -hmm. shame and therapy speak for malicious intent but it's like you're starting off with a much safer premise if you're like let's just be honest about this experience and not have shame around it just that easy yeah then you Honestly, don't have to be secret, if Andrew then you Huberman had to listened to more Esther Perel, then he probably wouldn't have felt the need to do all this cheating he could have just kind of explored what was really there for him more and figured out what he actually wanted um, Jeff or he's Goldblum. a genuine sociopath. Who knows? It's possible. It's a fun mystery. Um, Jeff Goldblum really would be a tough one. I feel like we've talked about that before. Jeff Goldblum. Reason. I see. If I heard that, I would be like, mm, yeah, okay. Yeah, but it would be hard. <laughs> I believe it. It would be really hard. <laughs> Hosea, that would be really hard. That would be hard. That, yeah. Yeah. You'd be like, no. The listen. It's. Do you know who Sam Cedar is? Uh uh-uh. uh Or Neil Gaiman? I've heard that name. Yeah. Sorry, we're not good at celebrities. If it comes out that Joe Biden, our president. (laughs) If one bad thing comes out about President Joseph Biden, my heart will break. (laughs) May fortune be upon him. (laughs) Oh, no, Gaiman is in the world. Could you imagine? Oh, I can't believe that they're watching the State of the Union address. Did we talk about this already? No. I felt like I was in the twilight zone. It was just like the most honestly bad speech i've ever heard just like not it was just like an old guy kind of slurring through it and it's like yeah we love old guys who can get through stuff like hurrah but also the president of our country and he got like the liberals were going off like they were watching beyonce just like wow and i was just like i am living in a dystopia yeah i don't want trump to win but this is crazy yeah just weird anyway just the figurehead just the boys club isn't it Joe Biden is more likely to appoint people who are qualified to positions of authority in the EPA and just other government industries that are actually capable of doing their jobs. Yeah. Horrifying. It'd be so... Bell Hooks getting cancelled is like the funniest thought. Bell Hooks. Oh, yeah. No, that would... That's a... Mm. wow yeah that would be something ira else. glass bell hooks you'd be like whatever it was it was she like uh she already unlearned it yeah yeah she's already confronted it okay like, yes i'm a i'm a wicked villain or something like i just can't imagine mm, anything's possible but i'm just this the human thing we just can you imagine a woman having five partners and telling them all that that you're monogamous <laughs> and that she's gonna impregnate and then also you <laughs> doing ivf with one of them <laughs> Goes to show how much men don't have to take on the burden of having a child as oh much, my doesn't God, it? Because totally. it's like you can just do IVF with this woman while playing fast and loose with five other women. Well, and also how many women are like genuine, genuinely really, really want to be mothers and how much power that yeah. people like him can wield by like dangling that carrot and being like, mm, yes, you want my child and all my fortune and stability <sighs> and clout. And- 
I've always wondered why he didn't just and have kind of like a wife and kids. I assumed he did he just, just by seems... the way that he is. Yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> he has big wife and kid energy for sure, except he doesn't but at all. It, he guess he has I big hope he doesn't five have kids. people who are now getting together to chat about it energy. That's going to be tough to come back from. What like you... in terms of like his future dating prospects, he's going to be really limited. I don't, I I don't know. The world's kind of crazy and does seem to <laughs> actually, there's a huge segment of the population who's just like, who cares? Well, I was going to say Trump selection. I'm like, people don't care. They just don't. A lot I know, of people but just it seems like care. the types of women he's attracted to are like educated scientists at universities or like, you know, they're not. Yeah. They're, he, yeah. All the women that fell for this were like, A, completely yeah, didn't so realize. I mean, there were signs though. There were signs, but I think they were just blinded by his, you know, everything else about him. But, um, so I feel like his dating pool is going to shrink a lot unless he does some kind of like public acknowledgement of like I've done a bunch of work and now it's and I, I think that's say, where the test always is it would be kind of a prime time pin to like confront that he maybe is polyamorous and to just lean into that and do it ethically from here on out but I feel like that's not maybe not even what it is for him because yeah, I feel like it was be, more yeah. about the lies and the manipulation and like the do you know I, I think he still does on some level want the traditional like wife I yeah, yeah. Like it might just really he... just genuinely be like an outlet for his stress that he just sporadically mm. and. But I actually think it might be his primary drive is just enhancing his like male ego. Like, because he's yeah, all maybe. the fact that he was like getting, he wasn't just like he wants women to be monogamous while he's not. Yeah. He wants this weird level of power and control, even over male colleagues. That always is like such a huge red flag. Yeah. So I'm like, that's not a person who should have a wife and kids. <laughs> Uh -oh, uh -oh, uh -oh. the actual right thing for him to do would be literally to just not date i can completely yeah. agree i'm like take a break long pause several years maybe i i'd seem yeah, like look how i've perfected being human but at the expense of others often women th it seems like this would be a really <laughs> good time for like any decent person like andrew callahan recently for instance who uh, you know there came stuff stuff came out about uh women that he interacted with and rather than being like those women are crazy. They're just trying to burn my career down. He was like, I'm going to take some time and think about what's going on here mm -hmm. and like check in with therapy and get my shit together. Have you tried therapy, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Andrew has already beaten us to the punch and has done therapy till he's 12. Maybe he's already learned the to speak. To and that would be that a great place to That seems to be probably to start. the main roadblock to effective therapy is even... lying to your fucking therapist. <laughs> we haven't even talked about his therapist yet. How how are they feeling right now what? reading this and just be like, he lied and to me. It's like, what's the fucking point? You're paying this person to give you a service you are not using. Or are you paying the person to be a uh, a shield, like yeah. to be like, I'm doing work, ha, 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 mm -hmm. so that you can he would seem never. like you're, mm. I don't know. That's weird. Um, thank you for to Ivana for the super chat. Sam Cedar is a progressive political YouTuber, i.e. the Young Turks. I love the Young Turks. Well, is this where we wrap things up? This is where we wrap things up. Wrap it up. I think he gets off on lying to his therapist. Yeah, it is kind of pointing to a, like a potentially big personality disorder. The level of uh, lying and getting away with it. Well, he did struggle as a child with divorced parents and skateboarding. So. <laughs> <laughs> Rock I mean, the prison, music. the month-long camp did sound pretty brutal. That does sound But brutal. I'm like, oh, your two Stanford professor parents got divorced. I mean, that's kind of the best types of people that you could. I mean, he did say he ex suffered extreme neglect after his parents' divorce. And I'm not a person who does the whole, like, I experienced this thing, so therefore anything you do is invalid if it's yeah, worse than yeah. anything I do. But. Um, it does seem like there's a lot of things at play here that maybe we don't know about yet. Yeah. Damn. How the Hubermensch have fallen. <laughs> daddy no more. Always tough to have to say goodbye to a daddy. It is. and But this only opens the space up for New a daddies. daddy dom who actually knows what he wants and expresses it rather than seeking it covertly. And gives us money. And gives us money. ISO, daddy dom who just gives us money. Huh. I would love to just be a side hoe, <laughs> but, you know, yeah. just let's express that and figure that out together rather than lying to me. It's not fun if you express it, Tana. You're ruining this for me. <laughs> yeah, my kink is you not honestly knowing. honestly his energy, though. How, how dare you sex shame me? <laughs> it's giving Noah Hill for sure.
Um, Ivana sent us another super chat. Thank you so much. Neil Gaiman wrote a lot of comic books like The Sandman, illustrated by a local artist, Mike. Sorry, I'm too far away. Dringenberg made local cinnamon Hadley famous. RIP. Thank you for educating us. <laughs> Alex, 10,000 new daddies every day. <laughs> <laughs> every day. <laughs> mm. Well, all right. Thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, thanks it. for joining this impromptu live. We appreciate it. If you're Andrew Huberman watching. If you are Andrew himself, let's collab. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk repair. Let's In a couple of years after you've taken some time. All right? We're willing to sit with you while you process this for as long as it takes. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Oh, Ash. Ash. Love you. <laughs>